Hey there YouTubers, welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about P.E. ratios, dividends and dividend yields, the volume of stock trading and how that could impact you, short selling and also stock buybacks. All important things of understanding a company before you purchase them and how these things could help you best identify a company that maybe is undervalued and could make you some money. So sit back, relax as we explore the world of stocks. So if you've watched my videos before, you know this speech, but take out your guided notes. They're gonna be really important for this video. The guided notes I have created for this video to help you better understand the concepts. There's gonna be a lot of different practice problems in the guided notes that we won't have time to go over in the video. I'll have the key at the bottom of the guided notes so you can check your answers, but it'll make sure that you understand what's going on with these concepts, and not even just what they are, but how can you apply them. So you can click the link in the description below to get the guided notes. So follow along as we explore the stock market and how to value stocks, an important concept that you should know. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is PE ratios. These are really important because they show what people believe the company is worth. So one of the things to figure out first is what is a PE ratio? That's a good question. A PE ratio is a price earnings. Really what we're seeing here is a ratio. So what we would do is we'd take our price of the stock, the market current price value, so let's say for this example, it's 20. That's gonna go on top. On the bottom then, we'll have our earnings, and it has to be our earnings per share. Now this can be a little bit tricky to find, but it isn't too bad. What we would do is look at how many outstanding shares there are. Outstanding shares are how many shares is the company currently selling. So let's say again, for our example, we have our 20 as our market price, so that's on the top, and we are currently purchasing a company that has 2 million outstanding shares. Now we can't just put that at the bottom because that doesn't show earnings. We have to figure out how much money they made per share. So to do that, we will have 20 on top again for our market price. On the bottom then, if let's say they made $1 million, we would have 1 million divided by 2 million. This would then equal a PE ratio of 40. We would divide our 1 million divided by 2 million first, and then we would be able to complete our equation. So by getting 40 there, we can see that the market is actually predicting that what they're trading at right now is 40 times what they are going to be making in the future. So we're looking at kind of the future here. Now, value investors are always searching for low P.E. ratios. There's different ways to interpret a P.E. ratio. If we are buying a company that is high growth, if you're looking at a company like Amazon, Facebook, Google, they are normally gonna have a very high P.E. ratio. And that's because investors are saying that they're gonna have a really good quarter. They're gonna have exponential growth. A smaller P.E. ratio is going to be saying they're gonna have a smaller growth. Ben Graham, one of the founding fathers, you could say, of value investing and Warren Buffett's teacher, preferred actually lower, and Warren Buffett especially, lower P.E. ratios. He would look for a really good company that was currently be undervalued. But what they would do is they see P.E. ratios as a way of the market predicting what they think will happen. So if you have a P.E. ratio in like the 48 range or 50, well, the market's expecting that that company will be growing by 20%. Now, that seems like great odds, and you're like, hey, I want this. I want a company that'll grow by 20%. I'll make a bunch of money. On the other hand, though, that means the expectations are very high. The higher the P.E. ratio, the higher the expectations. And if that company doesn't deliver, they're in for a big downturn. So a lower P.E. ratio shows that the market just really isn't predicting as much growth, which can be a positive if you've been able to find a good company that's currently being undervalued. Because when that company who's undervalued continues to outdo expectations, their stock can take off. On the other hand, if a really good company starts to slow down a little bit, that stock can come down pretty fast. So it's important things to understand. A high P.E. ratio shows that the market's predicting high growth, but that also means it's easier for that company to miss a projection and for them to go down. Another important thing to understand when investing in stocks is dividends and the dividend yield. Now, some stocks offer dividends. Dividends are cash payouts. Essentially, what you get is by owning a share of a company, they will pay you throughout the year. Now, let's say the company is offering a dollar for their dividend. 
For each share you have, you get $1. Well, for a year, that's their annual dividend. That's what you get for the whole year. Now, the dividend will be broken up throughout the year. So each quarter, you would get part of that. So for every share of this company I own, I'll get $1 back each year. Now, that can seem small and insignificant, but it adds up, especially when we own multiple shares. Now, not all companies will offer dividends. If your company is a high growth stock, they probably won't. They're going to be reinvesting their money into their company, and you get value then from their share price hopefully going up. Now, when doing dividends, it's important to understand a dividend yield. Let's go back to that example of me owning this company and they pay $1. Let's say the dividend is a dollar and their current share price is $20. If I wanted to find my dividend yield, I would have to take my dividend, so the dollar, and divide it by 20, what I'm paying per share. This will give me my dividend yield. Now, that's 5%, but why is that significant? The dividend yield is significant because that's how much money I'll be getting back on my total investment at the end of a year. So let's say that right now I have $5,000 and I'm gonna buy this company, I'm gonna purchase 250 shares. By buying these 250 shares at a 5% dividend yield, I will be getting $250 a year back. So what this means is by owning this company year after year, I'll keep getting $250 back. And if the share price of this company goes up, I can always sell and make money that way as well. It is important to note though that once you sell the shares, you no longer will be giving those dividend payouts. Dividends are to motivate people to hold on to the company, to keep their shares. Another big advantage is as stocks start to go down in price, well, the dividend yield goes up and that'll motivate people to buy shares of that company, which can stop it from going down. So it acts as kind of a protection for the stock. Now I know what you're thinking, Mr. Sin, stock prices change all the time. So this dividend yield must be all over the place. And how would this even really impact me? Is it really that big of a deal? It is, actually it is, yes. You can actually make a lot of money. Dividend yields are really important. Now we're not gonna have time in this video to go over all the different examples. So right now, pause this video, turn to your guided notes and see if you can complete the table. The table's gonna show you different dividend yields and what happens to your investment. We'll keep the dividend the same, but you'll be able to see how much money you can make back, especially when you have a high dividend yield and why it's so important. So pause this video right now and complete the practice problems. Again, to see the key, just scroll down to the bottom of your guided notes. Hopefully those practice problems went well. One of the ways that we can see if a stock is currently undervalued or overvalued is looking at the average dividend yield. Let's say we're looking at our average dividend yield for this stock for one year. If it is a 4.5%, again, that is our average dividend yield for the entire year. So it's not where we're at right now, but this is what typically is going on for this past year. Let's say our company again is 4.5%. Right now though, their dividend yield is 8%. Well, we could see right there, hey, we might have a really good deal here. They're way above their average. Maybe we should buy. They're right now pretty undervalued. On the other hand though, if all of a sudden we see that their current dividend yield is only a 1.5%, but their average again is four, we might say, hey, we're gonna wait a little bit. Let's let this stock come down in price so then that dividend yield goes up and then we'll purchase. So by using the average dividend yield, you can get a glimpse at maybe if your stock is undervalued or overvalued. Now that is by no means the only indicator you should use, but it can help in your decision. The higher again that dividend yield, the more money you make. And the lower it is, well, the less you're getting necessarily back. So make sure you have a good understanding of dividend yield and average dividend yield. Another way to see if it's a good time to buy a stock is looking at the stock volume. Now what the volume shows is how many people are trading that stock. That's people buying and selling today. Now you can also see the average of that stock. And by comparing these, you can see if a market move is more permanent or maybe if it's temporary. Now this is just a really easy way and it's a quick way to see what's going on and it's also not necessarily the most reliable. Use this as a starting, but don't use this as your main indicator if you should purchase or not. So one example here is let's say that our stock just dropped by 2% and we can see that the 52 week average trading volume is 50 million. Now if it's 50 million people trading and buying and buying and selling it all day long, but today it's only 20 million trading we could see this move is maybe superficial. The majority of the people aren't trading it today. So this might be temporary. 
On the other hand, if all of a sudden, let's say that, hey, this stock just went up 10% and the average trading for it is only 50,000, but today we have a million people trading it, we could see, hey, something happened. Someone knows something and there's some really good things going on with this company and maybe we need to look at it. So volume gives us just a quick glimpse at maybe how many people are investing in it. Are we seeing big players coming out and actually participate in the market here? Do we have real interest or is it just a slow trading day and the market really just, there isn't that many people participating in it and that's why the stock is moving. So it's important to understand that so you can see what's going on with your stock and your market share. The last two things that we're going to talk about in this video are stock buybacks and shorting a stock. Now stock buybacks are when a company feels like their current market price is way too undervalued and they decide to purchase some of their outstanding shares. Remember we talked about these at the beginning of the video when we went into PE ratios. Outstanding shares are shares that are currently available for trading. Well, when a company does stock buybacks, they take some of those shares off the market. This will change the PE ratio, it can raise their market value, and also maybe even change that dividend and dividend yield. When companies do stock buyback, it shows confidence in their future. They're telling investors, we believe we're way too cheap. We're purchasing our shares back because we know in the future we'll be more expensive. Now, this can help raise the price of the stock. It can also boost investors' confidence in the company. On the other hand, it sometimes can hurt it, depending on what the company is doing. Now this gets a little bit technical because sometimes investors believe that they shouldn't be spending their money on stock buybacks, but should be reinvesting in the company or their products. And it's hard to always figure out exactly what investors expect. The last thing is short selling. Now we're not gonna get into the whole process of how to short a stock. It's actually pretty complicated and advanced. And I definitely would not recommend it for anyone who is new to trading. But one of the ways you can use short sellers is by looking at how many are shorting a stock. When someone shorts a stock, they're putting a bet that the stock is actually gonna go down in the future. Unlike when you purchase a stock, you are betting that you think it'll go up. When you short a stock, you are putting money down saying, I think it is gonna go down, maybe $10, $20, and you add a time for that. You make money when the stock falls, and you lose money when the stock goes up. So if we can see that all of a sudden the average shorters, the people shorting a stock this month, have quadrupled, we might wanna hold off on investing because a lot of people are putting a lot of money down saying that stock's going down. So maybe it'd be best for us to wait and see what happens. On the other hand, if there's hardly any people shorting a stock, well, they might be pretty confident it's gonna go up, and so they don't wanna risk their money. Hopefully you have a good understanding now of PE ratios, dividends and dividend yields, shorting a stock and just what's happening there, volume trading and stock buybacks, and how all these things impact a stock and how they can make you a smarter investor. And by focusing on these, you can make more money. Now I talked about different practice problems in your guided notes, so make sure you complete those. Again, you can check out the key at the end of the guided notes to make sure you got them all right. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know. Hopefully this video helped you better understand everything with investing. Make sure to subscribe and support the channel and check out some of the other videos. I'm Mr. Sin and until next time, I'll see you online.